If I were to ask you what is the largest coal port in the world, well, you'd probably say New York or Philadelphia or even Hamburg or Liverpool. And they'd be good guesses, all right. But they'd be wrong. Because the largest coal shipper in the world is not one of the glamour ports of the Seven Seas. It's Toledo, Ohio, right here on the Maumee River. And maybe you wonder why it is a river town in Midwest America happens to be the coal shipping capital of the world. Well, I discovered that it's a combination of a good many factors, a chapter that has become vital to the Ohio story. Toledo, Ohio is one of the city's most important features. Located on the outskirts of Toledo City Center, the constant activity of the port often goes unnoticed by the average citizen. However, the effects of the port have influenced the lives of Toledoans in a variety of ways, with some of the outcomes being more positive than others. Perhaps the most well-known role that the port has had in changing the lives of Toledoans is its modern influence on the city's economy. Although Toledo has always been an important harbor city for the Great Lakes, its coveted location being one of the primary causes of the 1835 Toledo War between Ohio and Michigan, the port that currently exists was first opened in 1955 in order to become a part of the then-developing Great Lakes Channel System, the St. Lawrence Seaway. Since that time, the Toledo and Lucas County Port Authority has managed the highly trafficked harbor. It might come as a surprise, but Toledo's port is actually one of North America's most important harbors. Because of its inland location at the heart of the Great Lakes, the Port of Toledo is a major distribution point that is located within one day of 43% of the U.S. industrial market and 47% of the Canadian industrial market. Therefore, Toledo's port acts as one of the crucial steps in the very long and involved process of the transport industry. Well, we're inviting our, uh, celebrating our first ship into port, bringing uh, sugar in from Guatemala and uh, it's our first overseas ship into the port of Toledo and this is uh, as a port director of course my favorite day of the year kicking off commerce and jobs and economic impact to Northwest Ohio. Because it holds such great financial importance to the local, state, and national economies, throughout the years the port of Toledo has often been one of the top investment interests for the city. Not only does it provide nearly 20,000 jobs to Toledoans, it also generates over $1 billion in annual revenue, making it a very worthwhile business that greatly benefits the city's economy. Over the years, significant sums of money have been invested into the upkeep and modernization of the original 1955 facilities. However, in 2010, Toledo City Councilman announced that $18 million would be invested into a brand new project that would expand the harbor thus allowing the Port of Toledo to more efficiently increase its shipping industry. The plans for the new section of the port would include such state-of-the-art features as bulk material handling infrastructure and a series of railroad loops that would transport goods that needed to be loaded and unloaded from the cargo ships. The new project was christened with the name Ironville Dock in honor of the location on which the construction would take place. For most Toledoans, hearing the news of the Ironville Dock meant little more than a positive revenue boost for the port. Yet for others, the name Ironville recalled bittersweet memories of the closely knit neighborhood that had once existed nearly 50 years earlier on that exact same construction site. This is the often overlooked story of Ironville and its place in the history of Toledo's urban renewal era. Ironville could be considered the epicenter of industrial production in Toledo, Ohio. The neighborhood got its start when oil was first discovered on Toledo's east side in the late 1800s. A well was immediately erected at the site of the oil discovery, and for nearly 50 years it was fondly referred to as Old Klondike. In addition to its roots in oil production, the east side of Toledo was where much of the city's industrial work was located. At the turn of the 20th century, Toledo was on the cusp of developing into a major industrial town, following in the footsteps of its nearby sister cities of Detroit and Chicago. Although it was a much smaller city, Toledo was in a prime location for industrial production because of its easy access to Midwestern markets and its proximity to natural resources. While Toledo's history of glass production might be its most notable claim to fame, it also was the location of multiple steel stamping plants 
which supplied pre-cut and shaped metal to a variety of other industrial production sites, such as the automobile plants in Detroit. Much like its modern shipping industry, Toledo played a small but essential role in the overall production process. The majority of Toledo's factories were located on the east side of the city, on the opposite bank from where the downtown area is concentrated. Although the factories employed thousands of Toledo residents, a large portion of the people who worked on the industrial side of town were Eastern European immigrants who had moved to the Midwest in the hopes of finding good-paying jobs. Away from the upper-class white neighborhoods that historically resided near the downtown area, the east side of Toledo was not only considered to be the industrial side of town, but it was also the place where immigrant communities established their own ethnic neighborhoods near their places of work. Ironville is one such community. The neighborhood itself was first established in 1864 and had grown steadily as more and more German and Hungarian immigrants moved to Toledo. Originally called Irontown because of its proximity to an iron factory, over the years Ironville evolved into a fully functioning microtown, complete with its own schools and churches, and a main street that hosted a variety of businesses and grocery stores. In the early years of Ironville, the neighborhood was a safe haven for immigrants. Many of the residents were able to commute to and from their jobs and go about their daily business without fear of being harassed by other socioeconomic or racial groups that resided closer to Toledo city center. Although Ironville residents were often victims of the out-of-sight, out-of-mind philosophy, the separation also allowed Ironville to flourish in some unexpected ways. The community as a whole benefited from having to rely on each other, making it a small but closely knit group. The homes were modest one-story houses that originally did not have indoor plumbing. As the 20th century progressed, many homeowners installed indoor plumbing and modernized their homes to meet the standards of the idealistic white neighborhoods of downtown Toledo. Another feature that was always extremely important to the residents of Ironville was the upkeep of their front porches which acted as the place where friends and family could gather together. After the men spent long days working in a nearby factory, and the women and children spent their afternoons in the so-called Green Belt common gardening areas, neighbors would make a point of spending their evenings together on their front porches. The residents of Ironville, along with other, other such neighborhoods located on the east side, were constantly involved with other members of their communities, which created a family atmosphere that extended far beyond the boundaries of their blood relations. By 1960, Ironville was called home by nearly 800 people, meaning that the modest 72-acre neighborhood was full of life and thriving with constant activity. However, it was in 1960 that Ironville residents received some devastating news. Their small community had been condemned as a blighted area because of its proximity to the nearby factories. The fumes and smoke coming from the industrial plants were thought to be a dangerous health hazard to Ironville residents, and the whole neighborhood was deemed to be unfit for human habitation. For these reasons, all 222 homes and businesses that made up the Ironville neighborhood would be completely demolished. In its place, the city of Toledo intended for the land to be used in future industrial expansion. Whether the intentions of city planners were genuine or not is still up for interpretation. Certainly living in the shadow of smokestacks was not ideal for healthy living, but many Ironville residents felt that they were being forcibly removed from their beloved community simply for the economic interest of private investors. After the urban renewal project was first announced in 1960, the city made sure that every single one of the 800 Ironville residents had moved out of the area by 1963. Despite the protests by residents, the city would not be swayed from its decision, and by 1964, all remnants of Ironville had been effectively destroyed. While the demolition of their community had been a painful enough experience, the real salt in the wound of Ironville residents was what happened in the years that followed. For nearly 50 years, the 72 acres that had once been more than just a home to so many people sat almost completely vacant. The industrial park that the city of Toledo had once cited as the reasoning behind the urban renewal project never came to fruition, much to the dismay of the former Ironville residents. In the years immediately after the demolition of Ironville in 1964, the Toledo Urban Renewal Agency struggled to find adequate funding for the proposed project. After 10 years of struggling just to get the process started, and with no private investors who were interested in contributing to the project, Toledo was forced to fully abandon the urban renewal plans altogether in the interest of saving money. 
As time went on, the Toledo Urban Renewal Agency changed the overall estimated cost of the project from a relatively small sum of $2 million to a staggering $63 million, as was reported in 1970. Since the time that the Ironville Urban Renewal Project was officially closed in 1970, the majority of the land that had once been Ironville, in addition to the area existing around it, was left undeveloped. Former residents mourned the loss of their beloved community, and they were even more disturbed by the fact that their sacrifice seemed to have been for nothing. There is no denying the fact that Ironville residents got the raw end of an already disproportionate deal. But there is something to be said for the fact that, exactly 50 years after the loss of Ironville in 1964, the city of Toledo has finally completed the project that it set out to do. To the best of their abilities, planners working for the Port of Toledo have tried to honor the ghost of the community that had once existed at the location of the new Ironville Dock. Just this year, in 2014, the Ironville Dock project was officially completed after several years of construction and several decades of waiting. Now, rather than being forced to look at an empty piece of land where homes and businesses used to be, former Ironville residents can see a completed project that, in the long run, will help Toledo to grow economically. While the sacrifice of Ironville residents was severely premature, today it is something that the city of Toledo as a whole can be thankful for.